Hey everybody, hope you guys are all doing okay, welcome back to Let's Play Serolim Ultimate. So, last episode, uh, which was yesterday, I had to rush through it because I had to meet some friends at a baseball game. This, this episode, we can uh, relax, I can take my time, I've got nothing... Well, no urgent things to rush to, so, you know, we can just uh, take it easy. Um, and in case you're wondering, uh, the uh, Toronto Blue Jays lost their game yesterday, which was a, a little bit annoying, but you know what, it's okay. I'm, I'm over it, you know. Maybe they'll win next time, maybe they won't, that's just how sports works. You know, you know what I mean? Anyway, the <clears throat> excuse me. This episode, we have to take down the false god Mindworm, who we've already fought a couple of different times. But this time, well, like the previous time, uh, we are currently in farming mode. We want to get him to cough up a particular anointment. Um, the... Uh, Kabbalist anointment called Shimmer, which when we get it should greatly improve the defense and survivability of our build. Now, do we want to make any changes? I... I tell you what. I tell you what. So, let me go to the blacksmith. Um, and let's see, our centaur duelist has one empty trick slot in his sword. So let's socket something into it. Let's... Uh, in particular give it the pump drill to give it three extra gem slots uh, spell slots and let's give well first of all let's look at our spell list and I want in particular a spell that inflicts fear on the entire what on the entire enemy party. Hang on, um, why did that not work? Maybe it's because it's case sensitive? Let's try F-E-A-R. If this isn't working, I can look it up in my browser, but okay. What, maybe it was case sensitive, but in this case, uh, the fear has uh, an uppercase F, so I, I don't know. I don't even know. 10% chance is low. This is only on a single target. This is again only on a single target. Uh, we don't have any party wide fear infliction spells. In fact, you know what? Let me just look up on uh, the online list of spells because it's possible that, you know, some guild or some god shop, you know, the when you talk to the gods in the realms you can buy stuff from them it's possible that one of them has a party-wide fear infliction that I simply haven't bought so let's look at the list and in the full online list let's look for fear uh, is, are, is there a Okay, there is... Oh no, there is a booze spell called Riotous Rum, where enemies take a moderate amount of damage and are inflicted with feared. But... That might be... Uh, hmm. Th that's the only thing I'm seeing. I mean, we can... Uh, go over... To the gambling dwarves and buy it, but uh, I don't know if okay. So what was it called? Riotous rum. 
This is a booze spell. Let's buy it. Spending 2,000 notoriety. That's not a lot. I don't think we can use booze spells unless... Or can you? Hang on. Let's craft a gem of it and see what happens. I think you'd have to be a specific type of creature to use it. I don't know if we can just equip it by changing its uh, spell type. Anyway, we can spend... What was it called? Riotous... Riotous... Oh, well, of course we have to craft it. And it was a death type. A death type booze spell called Riotous Rum. Haven't crafted it, let's upgrade it. Where is it? There it is. And... Out of... I don't know... What would we enchant it with? Let's say... Obviously... What? No, hang on. Where was it in the list? Oh, there it is. What we enchanted with, I guess, um, generous duration increase and class swap to chaos. Is our centaur duelist gonna be able to equip this? I don't know. I've never messed with the. booze spells before. I guess we can equip it. I guess the thing with booze spells is they have special synergies that don't work unless you have certain creatures or um, the brewmaster specialty. And then if you use them without that, they're just cast as normal spells. Anyway, we'll, we'll figure that out very shortly, because we are going into this realm now. And if it does work... Uh, extra traits is a little annoying. If it does work... I will explain to you why I uh, was so keen on having something that uh, inflicts fear on the enemy. Okay, what is your macro? It's the reincarnation one. Let's see how this works. Uh, did okay. Enemies heal every turn. That's annoying. I mean, we can... We can turn that against the boss with Walper Tingers, which is also not nice. You're casting 11 times, which is a uh, another uh, garbage thing. All right. So, Dreadwhite, please just reincarnate yourself. This should end this battle, right? Yeah, because he gained a lot of health while the rest of our party members were getting murdered. Sure, I'll give him a 20% chance to avoid damage. We have repelling, and that's all we have for now. Oh god, another creature. Hopefully... Well, that sucks. That really sucks. Yeah, these extra traits are uh, really annoying. You can remove them, but sometimes they'll do stuff at the start of combat. And if you get the wrong combination of things against, uh, like, and the wrong build, you'll just die before you ever had a chance to do anything. So what if we do a uh, quick rabid dementia? Can we just punch them? Maybe... This is a, an easier way to deal with them. Immune to attack damage. Now we could... We could take this 
and we can try and kill him with blight. That's a lot of extra re rewards we could get. Let's let's try that. Let's let's see how that goes. Just trying to push the envelope in terms of getting uh, more out of this uh, false god. And it looks like all three of our remaining wandering enemies are in uh, this part of the map. Well, this guy uh, is there. Let's start off again. Blank slate. Riotous rum cast all by itself. Is that a thing that can happen with booze spells? Or did you have like animated gem or something? Oh, they have animated gem. I don't know. I I'm gonna have to look up how booze spells work. This could end up being... Could end up being... Uh... What, what did I cast? I, I... I think I was so distracted that I cast the wrong spell. I was trying to cast Rabbit Dementia. There we go. You are dead. I think this would uh, make the combat very tedious. So let's... And I don't want to give him more speed. I want to have a speed advantage, if at all possible. Ah, uh, these guys suck. These guys freaking suck. Let's start out getting rid of their traits. But now they're going to have a lot of time. Casting 11 times. They can have a lot of time to try and ruin our day. But they seem to not be using their turns very efficiently. With our Ebony Ant, let's see if maybe we can just once again punch our way through. It's kind of working. It's kind of working, alright. Alright. Now, is this thing trying to run away? Is this like a dumpling skin or what? what is it? Enemies are snared. What is this? It's a dumpling with a very strange skin on it. Interesting. So let's start out with a regular reincarnation. And now let's do a rabid dementia. And we've killed it. It did have a special skin. A gummy worm skin. Oh, hey, I like that. Like, finding these uh, special dumplings is uh, always great. All right. We've got to interact with this. I, yeah, sure, you can lose less stats. That's fine. And let's interact with you. Swamplands is definitely Maraxis. All right. All right, we're, we're we're getting we're getting there. Oh, blighted auto blight at the start of combat against the boss is gonna be good. Start of battle arbitration against these jokers is also well. You know what? Let's start off getting rid of your traits. And. They are all ensnared, so let's do a quick... Well, let's do this. And you're just gonna die without... Alright. I'm, uh, I'm okay with that. Immune to indirect damage, definitely don't touch that. And let's just debuff him a little bit. And the portal has appeared, so we're gonna go to it right now. Before we go there, though, I will explore the rest of the map. We've got the master to fight as well. And we've got these things to interact with. Now, let me just... Give me a moment. I've got to go find my notebook. The 
because in my notebook I wrote down the combinations that give you certain outcomes from interacting with those crystals. Now the ones we want, what I would like is B and D, which will give us favor. But failing that, buffing ourselves or debuffing the enemies would also be fine. But I guess we're fighting the master first. All right. Start off with a blank slate. Follow up with a reincarnation. Except the tremors are gonna stop us from. Uh... The tremors are going to stop us from uh... casting our spells. I'm gonna use antidote. And one, one more antidote, sure. And now the dread white can do an antidote again. Okay, what do you guys? I don't know what they're doing, um, but yeah. What the? Jeez, that was a, a bit of an ordeal, but we killed him. All right, now let's interact with these uh, things. B and D is what we want. Let's start with B and get D. Now that's great. We get... Anelta is very happy with this. We get 250 favor and a bunch of treasure. Let's try to do it again. Okay, this time we know we cannot get B and D because the options are... So A and C will buff, B and C will debuff. So let's pick C. And A and C will give us a buff, I believe. And we are warded now and defensive. That's good. This, sh if we make an offering, should give us more favor with the Nelta. Good stuff. Very good stuff. I'm gonna leave the optional combats for uh, after the boss fight. I'm gonna pick up everything. And ooh, more favor with the Nelta. Oh, and I think there's... No, there aren't any more rooms left for us to explore. So let's just fight Mindworm. And let's hope this works. We can only kill him with our indirect blight damage. He smells fresh prey. We've killed you a couple times now. Casting 11 times uh, is annoying, especially because you've got extra traits as well. So we'll start off with a good uh, blank slate. And now the main issue is we don't want the body to get a turn because the body increases all the other body parts' stats. The head attacks enemies, which, uh, sure, could be bad, but if we can get ourselves scaling, now here's the question, should we, because if we don't have, uh, Blight lasts for a bunch of turns. If we don't... Hmm. What I'm gonna do is... What does the saddle do? Grants protective buffs, and the orbs cast spells. The head attacks. This is gonna be a controversial decision, but instead of... Uh, doing a reincarnation, I'm gonna germinate the saddle, and hopefully... 
the second one will cast on one of the orbs. It cast on the head. And I think they may, they may have cast Archangel's Blessing on themselves, which should hurt them because they're blighted. However, we are now also blighted, so Archangel's Blessing is going to hurt us as well. Our spell gems are getting sealed, which is really annoying. But we do need to do this. Oh my god, ugh. Yep, we uh, have successfully gotten rid of Blight, but not before taking a bunch of damage. Okay, this could be bad. This could be very bad. The body is at the bottom of the list. Now too many of our party members are dead. I need to do a reincarnation on you. There's no way to tell if our strategy is even working. Because I can't see the uh, boss's health bar. Our animatus is dead. This is really bad. This means the body is going to get a chance to go. Blight is running out because we didn't have a... <sighs> yeah, okay, that, that didn't work. That was a... Uh... Huge failure. A colossal failure. So let me waste a bunch of my energy trying to get a good item bonus again. And then we'll go back and we'll fight Mindworm. Probably in a more conventional way. Yeah, he just kept us locked down very frustratingly, which I'm not happy about. Okay, less dodge chances and maximum buffs isn't great. Resurrect on death I don't like against uh, false gods. Especially because there's one body part that will provoke preventing us from really doing anything. I feel like if we didn't have extra traits in that realm, we could have done some good work. Because we wasted a turn getting rid of the extra traits when we could have started scaling in that battle. And that really set us back. 440! Oh. Gems sealed after casting isn't good. You know what, let's just go straight into uh, the arachnid nest. Into our... Uh, our home turf. Ugh, and uh, Eight enemies is really annoying. Extra speed as well is frustrating. What? Why did they not take any damage? Was it because of shell or that was weird? Oh, all right, hang on. What is even going on? Okay. Afflicts three debuffs. Starts at the top of the- I mean, he's at the top of the timeline anyway. So how about we just... Uh, should we do that, or... Yeah, he's at the top of the timeline anyway, right? Because he's got a speed bonus, so we'll do that. It'll, it'll suck. At least he doesn't have any instant kill things going on. More damage taken could be bad. Gem sealed after casting definitely is not gonna bode well for us. God, I was hoping this would be a. I was hoping this would be a uh, an easy fight, but uh, it might be it might be trickier than I thought. 
I would much rather be fighting the Ancestor. Oh my god, what are these guys doing? These imps are... A little bit irritating, but they're dead now. Uh, 20% less damage might keep us alive for a little bit. Yeah, I don't want to go too crazy buffing the false god, because we do actually need to win the fight. Otherwise, you know, none of this is going to work, right? This entire plan is going to completely fall apart. So yeah, let me see. What happens when we do this? This time they took damage. Did they just resist all the damage? in that first fight, or was it a nemesis snare that's going to help us out a lot? Or was it a, like a nemesis uh, quality? <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. Immune to attack damage? Definitely not. This is really annoying. I don't like that. I'll just give it a debuff. Immune to spell damage? Are we... We might use Finger of Death against it. Let's just give it less help. I'm confident in my build, but not that confident. We have Agile and Leeching. Uh, hey, another one of these guys. Maraxis in the Swamplands. I think that's the same one we had last time, the same question. We're getting pretty close to another favor rank with Regalis as well. And now we're talking. Um, enemies are sleeping and blighted, but this time they don't have the, uh, the heal every turn. The thing about cheesing with heal every turn is that you have to keep the blight on the enemy. Because if Blight expires, then they will get all of their health back instantly, and you'll have to start all over again. So let's start off with uh, with this. And follow up with this. And we should get a good amount of loot from that. Dead, nothing rare, but uh, it's fine. It's okay. Alright, start off with uh, this. Alright, keep going, keep going. Wanna get all the buffs we can. All the advantages we can get before we fight this guy. Alright, let's go, let's go. Bit of a slowdown. I'm not sure if it's noticeable in the video, but I'm feeling it right now. This game usually runs right. Uh, you'd expect it to run smooth because it's not a, um, you know, big, fancy, you know, open world, 3D hyper realistic game. But every once in a while, I do notice it does seem to slow down a little bit. Although that's probably because of something Windows is doing in the background. If I had to guess, All right? Two more wandering enemies. Another Mimic fight. I guess now Mimic fights are better than the uh, ordinary loot outcome that you'd get when, you know, you interact with the Cocoon and it's just a guy who tanks you and then gives you loot. Because now Mimics are giving us extra loot because we found that first Mimic card. Alright, let's, let's take these guys out. Can I just do this? Yes, I can. Just 
to die, please. Right, we're almost at 10 million brimstone. At some point we hit 10 million crystal, I didn't even notice. All of our resources are going up. Ex Ooh, is that a treasure golem? I was gonna say, all of our resources are... God, this is the worst outcome from this event. What I was gonna say was all of our resources are going up, except for energy, or, or power rather, which is going down because I'm spending it on so many random things. All right. Let's do this. Uh, gotta hunt down this dumpling. This is another good thing about farming in this realm in particular, is that you gotta good chance of finding dumplings and as a bonus we've also found a treasure golem oh look at that treasure golem and dumpling are both trapped who are we gonna fight first dumpling what if we just attack <coughs> a rabid dementia should be able to finish it off no need to worry with the reincarnations We'll gain a few more levels. Maybe those stats are gonna help us against the boss, but... Oh my god, are you serious? The treasure golem went first and then ran away before we could do anything. Are you fucking serious? Are you... I... I... I disagree, game. I disagree. Uh, well, sometimes that's gonna happen. That's the first treasure golem who's escaped from us in a long time. But it still... Feels... It feels bad, man. Alright, before we end... Not before we end, before we rush headlong into this boss fight. Let's just explore the rest of this map. Nothing there. Nothing here. I can take you. Not Well, a bit of favor there. Nothing special in that uh, chest either. Alright, let's just go and probably die to this boss. All right. Let's go and probably die to Mindworm. Okay, so the body has been sent to the bottom of the timeline. Yeah, he's got an annoying spell which forces the victim to cast all of its healing spells on it it basically which I don't which I do not like so the way to do it is so the dread white is not gonna get a turn the ebony ant is gonna be the last one to move so we'll do it like this you animatus casts reincarnation Nadine Rift Dancer double casts reincarnation. Oh, this is this is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant because uh, I was going to use his turn to cast arbitration, but instead we can. Uh, just use his turn to do something else instead and the thing that I will do instead is arbitration is sealed now but I'll use your turn to cast rabid dementia and with you I need to germinate the body 
which is once again at the bottom of the timeline. What? What spell is he casting that's forcing us to attack ourselves? Hang on. Subterfuge. That's that's really annoying. Um, so now, I mean, here's what we're gonna do. Whoa, 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 whoa! Double cast rabbit dementia. Feared. On the enemy is good and the reason feared on the enemy is good is because they cannot gain stats <sighs> like I'll I'll probably never stop complaining about this uh, I, you really should be able to see boss health bars this is a Probably the one biggest flaw in this game. Anyway... Let's just do... this? Okay, so... Feared has gone away, which is kind of bad. Now, Animatus... Okay, we have other people who can, uh, um, who can lock the body down. Our animators, just do a normal attack. Okay, the tail is gone, which means we can now attack the body, and after the body's gone, we can just do it as normal. I think I'm going to allow the dread white to take a turn. Because with you, we should have another germinate, right? We do. But this is a single cast germinate on the body. Okay. Now the vivifier, your rabbit dementia is sealed. You should have a single cast uh, ethereal rabbit dementia, right? Yeah, there it is. And, uh, does this guy have... Has he given himself any extra temporary traits? I don't think so. I think it's just... I think it's just, uh... The fight is just naturally being a little bit difficult. And let's just hope that you attack the body. Oh, 20% chance... Is, uh... Oh, hang on, I think uh, actually no, I have a better idea. Double cast reincarnation, and then Centaur Duelist casts Archangel's Blessing. Oh, you confused? You confused several of the body parts. That's good. Additionally... I was... trying to get him to attack the other orb, but I clicked too fast. Alright, now... I think we are... out of the woods. Okay, another body part is down. And the body itself is down, and I think at this point we are a-okay. We can just do this. I wanted the non-confused orbs to be uh, targeted, but I don't think there's really anything he can do at this point. Yeah, he is toast. 
Toasty indeed, and this should finish it, maybe? There we go. You don't actually get that much experience for taking down a false god, which is interesting, I've noticed. Defeated Mindworm. Let's build this up a little bit. Before we open the orb, let's... With left, oh, a nether stone. A garbage nether stone, but you know, a nether stone nonetheless. What do we have in the right? Uh, nothing interesting. What do we have in here? No shimmer. Although, this is a damage multiplier that's similar to the damage reduction. Mm. That's, this is interesting. Because this will mean that when other people cast Reincarnation, it'll happen twice. But what other ethereal spells would it be useful for? Germinate? But would it cast on a different target, or it would... I think it would just cast twice on the same target. Hmm... What... what does this do? What? This is weird, um... That's in... that, again would be for a very specific build that's based on timeline manipulation. The enemy is killed. Antithesis. Hmm. Prism. You know what, let's just get Spell Slinger. Probably won't use it, but we'll take it. Friendly Fire. Interesting, I guess. So, what have we gotten? We've gotten more of these stats, basically. So, more dodge chance, stat increases, and indirect damage reduction is the main one. No Shimmer, but... Hey, look. Oh, the Goblet of Trials is full. And are we gonna summon Divination Candle enemies? You know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. And let's assign the Reincarnation Macro to both of you. Actually, no. Don't enemies have a speed advantage? They do. Let's get one group. And we'll see if this is a uh, bearable. Oh, but I need to change your strategy to macro first. It's, it's kind of bearable, so you know what we'll do? 15 of these guys while we do our debrief on uh, the fight that we just had. So I need to change your strategy from attack to macro, and now let's, you know, let's just do this. Their, uh, their chance to resist damage is messing with us quite a bit. But, ultimately, I don't think this is that bad. Yeah, so, that fight was obviously better than the previous fight, which we lost. Which was always going to be a long shot, trying to uh, take it down with Blight. Especially given that we had so much stuff to juggle in, the, in that first fight. Like, extra traits as well, we had to get rid of those. And... Too many of our creatures were getting killed by its attacks because we, because we had to waste time, and we didn't get the uh, you know HP, the early HP boost from reincarnating our uh, Dread White. Second time around went a lot better. The debuffs from the realm on the boss snared, especially like him entering the battle with that, bought us a lot of time to get situated. 
And in the end, it was, uh, it was straightforward. I enjoyed it. The sad thing is he did not give us Shimmer. But if we look at a... Uh, our anointments. We picked up a second Kabbalist anointment. Uh, so close. So close. Maybe, maybe, maybe not that close. Who knows how the game, you know, selects its loot. But eventually we will get. We will get Shimmer. And here's the thing. Every fight with him that goes by where we don't get Shimmer the chance of us getting Shimmer the next time goes up higher simply because there are fewer uh, anointments left, you know, eligible anointments left for us to pick up. Of course, right now there are so many, and because uh, it's not just the Kabbalist class, he can also, there are like three or four different classes from whose anointments he could give us, uh, you know, the one, or like the selection at, we get at the end. So, st like overall probably less likely that we would get any one particular anointment, but again over time the odds will uh, improve because whenever we pick one it would I would assume get taken off the list and it wouldn't interfere with us getting the other ones. Alright, we're getting through these guys pretty quickly. Am I gonna farm more of them off screen? I'm thinking no, it's been... It's been long enough. Maybe if we didn't have that, you know, that false start, that took up quite a bit of time. So I'm uh, feeling like I'm at the uh, I'm at the end of how much I want to play. The other thing is, even with games that you really like, it's important. And maybe especially with games that you really like, it's important to not play them too much because you can get burned out. And if you do get burned out, then it can take a very long time to get back into the headspace where you're enjoying the game again. So that's. Definitely the. Uh, that's definitely something I'm mindful of when I'm playing. Is that the moment I feel like I've had my fun and uh, like I'm at the point where. Where. Like farming is fun up to a certain point. And after that, it starts to feel like a chore. And when I feel that point starting to approach, I'm like, okay, maybe, it, maybe it's time to take a break from this game and do something else. And I think that is point that is uh, being approached by me right now. And the main point of this video wasn't even to farm; it was to take down. Uh, Mindworm, which we successfully did, and the farming is extra. Like, I want to do a bit of farming in each episode, just because there's so much to farm. Oh, we've already killed all of them. I was like, where's the last enemy? There is no last enemy, they're all dead. So let's go back to Serlim. Yeah, I do a bit of farming in each episode, but in an episode where we've already had another big thing to accomplish, I'm like, okay, maybe we don't need to spend that much extra time than also having a farming session. Alright, let's collect our reward. 13,000 piety and a bunch of other things. And, of course, let's not forget that we need to set this uh, up to work with the animator again. This could take a while. But hopefully not. Come on. And there we go. That did not take long at all. And despite all the uh, resources, like, what does it cost to randomize? It costs essence. 
despite you know the essence that we're spending on that, if you look at our currency, we still have over 9 million essence. We're just raking it in. The only resources we're hurting for is power, which is why I'm farming for stags, but so far to no avail. Right, is there anything else we need to do? Anything else at all? I'm thinking... Well, let's check our Rune of Prophecies. Was there any, like, gambling stuff we needed to do? Riddle Dwarves? Chaos Creatures, Pilgrimage Missions, Hunt Missions... Okay, we have to defeat the Lost Construct. Should we take a break from farming Mindworm and take down the Lost Construct? It'll give us an extra, like, I don't know, 5,000 piety. Should we do that? Should we do that? Hmm. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say it's more important to get Shimmer. And you only have... You can only fight false gods very rarely. So I'm gonna go after Mindworm instead. At Realm Depth 501. And I think that is all for this episode. Next episode, I think we are gonna have a nether boss fight. That is correct, we're gonna be fighting Furness. Let's roll ourselves a nice bonus. That's a, one of the things that is consuming... Ooh, 408 is very nice. This is one of the, the things that's consuming a lot of our energy as we're spending it on rolling for item bonuses. But yeah, that's what we're gonna do next episode. This episode, we had one failed attempt and then one successful attempt at farming Mindworm. He didn't give us what we wanted, but we had fun anyway, and you know what? Even if we're not getting what we want straight away, we are making progress on this stuff, right? It might... it's going very slowly, but these bonuses that we're unlocking are gonna just be there for good. And if we can slowly build up our uh, sort of innate indirect damage reduction, it's really going to help us out a lot. But anyway, that is going to be all for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll stick around for the next episode as well for the fight against Furness. And uh, until then, take care.